Hello everyone, this is Yash Nama. Thank you for joining me on this video. This is a practice question on marginal costing and absorption costing. WND Limited produces and sells washing machines. Actual data relating to October, November and December 2019 are as follows. We've got opening stock, units produced, units sold, variable production cost per unit produced, variable marketing cost per unit sold, fixed production cost and fixed marketing costs. The selling price per unit is $3,250. The budgeted level of production used to calculate the budgeted fixed production cost per unit is 1,500 units. Any over or under absorption is written off to cost of goods sold in the month in which it occurs. Required. Prepare income statements for WND Limited for October, November and December 2019 using variable costing, also known as marginal costing. So let's first look at requirement A and then we will move on to requirements B and C. In order to prepare the income statement under marginal costing, let us first make note of some of the details from the question. The selling price is $3,250 per unit. Marginal cost per unit. Marginal cost per unit will be the variable production cost per unit. And in this case, it is $999. Then we will look at units produced and units sold. Units produced in October is 1500. November 1425 and December 1525. Units sold October 1360. November 1425 and December 1525. Marginal costing income for W and D Limited for October to December 2019. So we will start with sales. Sales for October is equal to units sold times selling price per unit 3250. November is 1425 units sold times selling price 3250. And December 1525 units sold times selling price 3250. From sales, we deduct all variable costs. So we will first start with variable cost of goods sold and in order to calculate the variable cost, cost of goods sold it would be useful to have information on opening stock and closing stock. So let's figure that out first. There was no opening stock in October. Goods produced 1500, units sold 1360. So closing stock is equal to opening stock plus units produced minus units sold 140. Closing stock of October will become the opening stock of November. And again, the closing stock of November is opening stock plus units produced minus units sold. That's the closing stock 140 again. Opening stock of December will be the closing stock of November. And closing stock of December again will be 140 because units produced and units sold are of the same quantity. Now I'll prepare a working note to calculate the variable cost of goods sold. So we'll start with the value of opening stock. Because there was no opening stock in October, the value of opening stock is zero. Then we will add variable cost of production that is equal to $999 per unit times number of units produced 1500. Value of opening stock plus variable cost of production gives us the value of goods available for sale. From this we will deduct closing stock value so value of closing stock is 140 units times $999 per unit. 
So goods available for sale minus closing stock gives us the variable cost of goods sold. This is equal to, now this was for October. We'll do the same for November and December. Closing stock of October becomes the opening stock of November. Variable cost of production for November is units produced 1425 times $999 marginal cost per unit. Sum of these two will give us value of goods available for sale and value of closing stock is 140 times 999. So variable cost of goods sold is 1423.575. December, opening stock of December is the closing stock of November. Value of production is equal to 1525 units produced times $999 variable cost per unit. Opening stock plus variable cost of production gives us the value of goods available for sale. From this, we will deduct value of closing stock, 140 units times $999 per unit. And this will give us variable cost of goods sold for December. So we started with sales and then we deducted variable cost of goods sold. Then we will deduct variable marketing costs. Variable marketing cost is $799 per unit sold times number of units sold 1360 for October. 799 times 1425 for November, 799 times 1525 for December. So from sales, we deducted all variable costs. Now we have contribution. Contribution is sales minus the sum of variable costs. From this, we deduct fixed costs. We've got two sets of fixed costs, fixed production costs, and fixed marketing costs. Fixed production costs are 495,000 per month. And fixed marketing costs are 125,000 per month. So from contribution, if we deduct the fixed costs, we will have operating profit. So the operating profit is 1.35 million for October, 1.44 million for November, and 1.59 million for December. So this is the income statement for WND Limited for October to December under marginal costing. So now let's move on to requirement B, prepare income statements for WND Limited for October, November, and December using absorption costing, also known as full costing. Now, in order to prepare income statement according to full costing, we should first determine the full manufacturing cost per unit. So now full manufacturing cost per unit is equal to variable manufacturing cost per unit plus fixed manufacturing cost per unit. Let us first make note of the variable manufacturing cost per unit. Variable manufacturing cost per unit is given as $999. Fixed production costs are $495,000 per month. And we are told that the budgeted level of production used to calculate the budgeted fixed production cost per unit is 1500 units. So fixed cost per unit is equal to fixed cost per month upon budgeted units per month, $330. So I will now make note of the fixed manufacturing cost per unit. That is equal to $330, which we calculated earlier. So the full manufacturing cost per unit is equal to the sum of the variable manufacturing cost per unit and fixed manufacturing cost per unit, which is $1329. So now we can proceed to the preparation of income statement under absorption costing. 
So let's start with the sales revenue. As we know, the sales revenue will not change whether we are following absorption costing or marginal costing. So what I'm doing here is to copy over the sales numbers from the marginal costing income statement. I've got the sales revenue. From sales, we deduct the cost of goods sold. So I'll prepare a working note here on cost of goods sold. Opening stock. There was no opening stock in October. Add production. So how many goods were produced in October? 1500 units times what is the full manufacturing cost per unit 1329 so opening stock plus production gives us the value of goods available for sale from this we deduct the closing stock closing stock was 140 units in October times full manufacturing cost per unit so cost of goods sold is equal to goods available for sale minus closing stock. Let's move on to November. The closing stock of October will become the opening stock of November. So I'm copying that over. Goods produced in November is 1425 units. So 1425 units times full manufacturing cost per unit. As we said earlier, opening stock plus production will give us the value of goods available for sale. From this, if we deduct closing stock 140 units times full manufacturing cost per unit, we will get the cost of goods sold. And again for December, the closing stock of November will become the opening stock for December. Production 1525 units times Full manufacturing cost per unit. Opening stock plus production gives us the value of goods available for sale. From this we did our closing stock 140 units times full manufacturing cost per unit and we will get the cost of goods sold for December. So I'll copy over the cost of goods sold numbers from our working note. The next thing we have to look at is any over or under absorption to the cost of goods. Now you can see that we have used budgeted fixed production of 1500 units to calculate the fixed manufacturing cost per unit. Now we have to compare the budgeted production with the actual production to determine if there is any over or under absorption. Now in October the actual units produced is 1500 and it is the same as the budgeted number of units produced so there's no problem. Next in November the actual number of units produced is 1425 whereas the budgeted number was 1500 units. Now because of this what would have happened in our calculations is we would have under recognized fixed costs to the extent of 1500 minus 1425 which is 75 units because what we have done in our calculation of uh, cost of goods is we added production uh, based on the actual production numbers whereas we used the cost per fixed cost per unit based on the budgeted production numbers so what has happened here is we have under recognized fixed costs so we have to add fixed cost to the extent of 75 units to bring the fixed cost to for total of 495,000. So we will make adjustments for the production volume variance. Is equal to zero for October. Is equal to 75 times 330 for November. And December, you can see that the actual production was higher than the estimated production. So in this case, we would have 
over recognized fixed cost so we have to deduct fixed cost to the extent of 25 units times $300 $330 per unit so it is minus 8250 now let us calculate the gross profit gross profit is equal to sales minus the sum of cost of goods and production volume variance so once we have calculated gross profit then we will deduct non manufacturing costs in this case we have fixed marketing costs and variable marketing costs fixed marketing cost is $125000 per month variable marketing costs are $799 per unit sold so 799 times 1360 for october 799 times 1425 for november 799 times 1525 for december operating profit is equal to gross profit minus the sum of non manufacturing costs so this is the income statement for wnd limited for october to december using absorption costing finally let's move on to requirement 3 explain the difference in operating profit for october november and december under variable and absorption costing so reconciliation of profit under absorption costing and variable costing so we will start with so we will start with profit under absorption costing so we will start with profit under absorption costing so i am copying over the profit numbers for october november and december from this we will deduct profit under marginal costing so i'll copy over the profit from marginal costing this would give us the difference so we can explain the difference between profit under absorption costing and the profit under marginal costing by looking at the difference between the fixed manufacturing cost in the ending inventory minus the fixed manufacturing cost in the opening inventory so let us take a look at first the fixed manufacturing cost in the ending inventory for october so the ending inventory for october was 140 units times fixed manufacturing cost per unit was 330 ending inventory in november 140 units times fixed manufacturing cost per unit 330 and ending units in december 140 units times fixed manufacturing cost per unit 330 now we deduct fixed manufacturing cost in the opening inventory so opening inventory in october was zero opening inventory in november was 140 units times 330 per unit and in fact for december the opening inventory will be the closing inventory for november so let's look at the difference between these sets of numbers so here you can see that the difference in profit under absorption costing and marginal costing is the same as the difference between fixed manufacturing costing and ending inventory minus fixed manufacturing cost in opening inventory i hope this video was useful if you have any questions please feel free to contact me thank you